was telling her before I invited you, I was like, hey, maybe I might go in the office to shoot this. But then my office is going to look like a hot mess per usual. Like, you know, the Boba Fett poster you always make. Hi, May. The Boba Fett poster <laughs> you always make fun of me for and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I guess if I have to clean my office to shoot uh, more podcasts, I guess I'm just never going to shoot in there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen and non-binaries, is the beginning of Razzcast number 19. We haven't even gotten right. to 20 yet. That's crazy. We've been doing this for two years and we are like, yeah, we'll do a Razzcast maybe. Every Razzcast is so, it's like, everyone is so important. It's so, you know, we don't just do a Razzcast all the time. It's, they're important. Yeah. Talk about the Activision Blizzard deal. We got to talk about the Oscars. That'll be coming up. That'll probably be the next one. Uh, We got to talk about weird food and places That's it was important. weird to follow up the weird uh, the the odd food like odd food and great rest or great food at odd restaurants and then we went to death <laughs> <laughs> dead, dead what a transition <laughs> so yeah, someone watching these consecutive order Ooh. this is true but speaking of dead we're talking today about when we we look we look to, you know, uh, entity that we love so much and hold such a deep place in our hearts. And the void. The yes. In this in the fall, the mighty fall that comes with that. And I want to put this out here before we get into this episode. One, we're gonna talk about mo we're probably gonna mostly talk about video games, mainly because I think video games i think there's a lot more to process than like movies once in a while you get the oh they're forcing like fantastic fan four stick sorry i was gonna say fantastic four fan four stick say it right uh the first like there's stuff like that right and i think talking about music and other stuff is a little bit disingenuous and like not just kind of a little let's talk about yeah let's talk about kanye again no let's let's not talk about kanye again um but like and the other point i want to make is eric knows i love disclaimers no this is not about to be oh you made a stupid video game but no we get it it's hard as shit to make video games to make movies oh we get it this is not shitting on the people that make them this is just gonna be a conversation about how the hell do some of these companies go from making certain games to falling apart? And right. sometimes they're a lot more easy to blame on other things. Sometimes it's kind of easy to blame it on said developers themselves and not overarching um, entities. And if you've obviously looked at the thumbnail, uh, the main talking point of this is the week that this is coming out everyone's super hyped video game suicide squad kill the justice league is finally after seemingly 25 years it's finally right. come out it's been waiting to come out longer than cyberpunk 2077 i feel like um and so that's kind of the main jumping off point for this episode and then we're gonna just kind of figure out other stuff we want to talk about um mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, where where do we start with this? I mean, it's very obvious to talk we'll, about. We'll start, with the, we'll start first with the disclaimer of neither of us have played the game. No, so just this is before the game's of... out. We're not important to get invited to play it. We're so yeah, smart. We're, ba <laughs> we're basing this off of what we've seen, cl clearly of what we've seen, what, have, what has been spoken about, um, I won't dive into like the random leaks that dropped about no. it because like, we yeah those I, are unimportant. Yep, yeah. it's more so we're talking about how we feel that everything that we've been shown and everything that's been talked about is not what is been the rock steady standard in a sense, and that's not saying too much because rock steady. You know, in the end of the day, hasn't done too much, but what they have done is a lot of great stuff. And we're not saying again, we're not saying the game's not going to be, you know, at the end of the day, great. 
it could it could change our minds at the last mm-hmm. second. But you know, we're this footage. We're looking at these people talk about their experiences playing the game, and it's just so basic and boring and not exciting whatsoever. Like I'm jumping into a game where I play as a fucking shark and he just shoots a gun. But he's played by that Samoa should be Joe. More exciting. But he is Samoa Joe. He <laughs> is Samoa Joe. So I don't know. I, I they announced this game and I was excited. Uh, mainly because, you know, this is the next game from Rocksteady. And let's and you know I, what? That's I want to break this down too real quick because I'll get into we'll get into your opinions. I don't know if this is like on the channel because I feel like I feel like I say the same shit a lot and then I cut a lot of it out. But there's probably a video somewhere on this channel where we've talked extensively about how from the end of Arkham Knight to when Suicide Squad got announced there, in my opinion, Rocksteady has had one of the weirdest, like, wh- like what is going on? We are hearing so many different rumors of like an old school Batman game, like a retro style Batman game to, they were going to do Superman to, they were going to do justice league to, they were going to do this. They were going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and also at the time of recording a uh, Septon Hill, and I don't know the other gentleman's name that founded Rock City. They just started their new company for AAA games. I don't know the name of it. It's like, I think it's like something star, like five star studio, something like that. So five star, five please. star studio. You can only, you can only um, rank us five stars. Yes. So like up until the Suicide Squad, we were kind of led to believe it was Montreal because of Arkham Origins. Yeah, and you know, we were sort of thinking that's where they were going to go. And then we thought they were going to put out um, a Superman game. And then even after Gotham Knights has been out and we've been here, we were hearing we were going to get a fourth Arkham game from Montreal. It's like a whole thing. But anyway, so yeah, Suicide Squad gets announced from Rocksteady, which is the company that seems like the odd ones due to their track record. I have to get May because she's biting on my hoodie. So go. Huh. <laughs> may, may. May. Oh. Uh, yeah so they announced this game uh i can't remember exactly if it was like a vga or something but it was the um, DP direct thing they were doing during covid oh uh, it might have been but they announced it and they announced immediately you know it's rated m suicide squad game you know and the first thing they show off is of course that superman's murdering people and you're like okay that, this, this seems kind of interesting and they said it was next gen only, which, you know, at the time, crazy to think about. Because, again, uh, you know, we were just getting the consoles. So, and they had already said Gotham Knights was going to be on every console uh, besides, like, the Switch. And then that turned out to, you know, change. But, you know, whatever. It's Gotham Knights. Um, and then just it was kind of just dead silence for like a while and then we got something like towards the end of the year i think that was the vgas they like announced stuff and then dead silence for like two years and we're like what on with this project and then all of a sudden again jeff Keeley being jeff Keeley, is getting all these you know drops on it okay we're getting tidbits and then they're like okay it's coming out this day in 2022 uh it's like 2023 we get to 2023 and, you know, we end 2022 off with the, the reveal of, you know, RIP Kevin Conroy and his last Batman appearance, unless that, um, that Batman, uh, Cape Crusader show ever drops. Cause he's in that, uh, the Bruce Tim one that HBO doesn't want to put yeah. out <laughs> because fuck, fuck me, I guess. Uh, but they announced that this is his last performance and we're all like, okay, well, you know, at least, you know, if we're going to play this game, we get that. February comes around. Sony 
gets this big scoop about Suicide Squad. And, it, and there and was it, barely any gameplay up until this point. Like, and this was three months out from the game coming out, too. That was the other thing, too. We weren't seeing any gameplay. No. Everything was closed behind doors. No one was getting anything. And what we get is and I like to call Marvel's Avengers 2.0. Because it's literally just looks like the same fucking game. Except it's worse because every character plays the same. It just what it looks like no one has anything about them that comes out. I would understand like Harley Quinn maybe is more like the gun shooter type of thing. Or Deadshot as well. But like Captain Boomerang, he throws boomerangs. Oh, there's a gun. He's mainly using a gun. Oh, there's a boomer. Oh, nope, it's a gun. Oh, is that gun firing boomerang? No, it's a bullet. Nope. It, it's just like, what? And then there's this gear system that was going into it, and we're like, oh, God. Not again. Dick. And realizing that the game is basically a live service game, and they just didn't want to say anything about it. And I'm so... It, this is the problem with companies. They keep saying shit about live service games. That they don't want to say are live service games. Yeah. It's happened with the Avengers. And uh, another company that kind of went on the downhill. And we have no idea what's going on with them. Crystal Dynamics. Fucking they never wanted to say any shit about Avengers being a live service game. Yeah. They kind of just. They, secretly, they secretly just were like, we're going to help make this perfect dark game. If that even is a thing. And it'll, if it ever comes out. Well, no, actually, they but said it's basically a perfect or a perfect art they said it's basically crystal dynamics now this new quadruple a studio <laughs> nothing is going on with it but you brought up a good point though here it's like we're not going to spend this episode being like oh blah, blah, blah. i don't know what your general opinion is on the avengers because i feel like you do enjoy it more than me but the thing avengers is not amazing but the thing that the avengers got right is every character feels like that character. You don't feel like you could do whatever you want. You're limited, like especially if you're playing like a Black Widow or something, it's not like you could do everything you want. You have to play as specific characters. Oh, you can't get up to that? Yeah, you can't just fly around and have some magical whatever. You're stuck. You have to have certain characters. You made every character feel like it is what it is. And in the Avengers, the Avengers was... Here are the single player story missions that we know we want to make. And then here's the shit that our bosses want to shove in because it's live service, blah, 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 blah. Suicide Squad, there's no uniqueness to the characters, maybe besides voice acting and like character work, right? Yeah, and right. Some maps just seem like it's just an open world and it's like all of you could do whatever. It, it looks so boring of an yeah. open world. Like everything, you can't tell what looks like one area from another no. where like where like you get something like gotham in arkham knight where like you can't name every section of gotham but you're like oh this is clearly a different area than i've been in the other side of the fucking city mm -hmm. and that was a small a small small smaller map than what this is supposed to be i don't understand um what went behind that well, I'll tell you what it was. Money. Thinking that they can make money. Because we know that there's going to be a battle pass and a store. Uh, we don't know exactly what goes into that shit. We know that there's cosmetics, of course. But, like, at the end of the day, like, so many of these games are off the live service of cosmetics only. And you're just like, I don't know. Ugh, uh, uh. I shouldn't be paying so much money up front to be then spending more and more money on top of it. And I get it. That's how a lot of companies like try to get you in on it. That's how, and we'll talk about them in a little bit, but how destiny was for a while. Then they went free to play. And then now it would make sense. Like if it was free to play, I would understand it, but this game's not dropping on game pass day one. No, it's probably going to take over a year for that shit to happen. It took Gotham Knights a year. Yeah, it's probably take a long time for Suicide Squad to do that, and it's going to end up on Game Pass. I will tell you that. 
Well, and like, so I already am hovering over like seven different things to talk about, and I'm not going to try and do my normal Brian. Let's just wrap it all into one conversation with it. But so I'll start with this first point. So obviously the conversation is, how does this happen? How does this happen, right? And, you know, growing up, like Eric and I said, some of these companies, we like, they were gods. Like we were like, oh my God, the new Naughty Dog, the new rock star Valve, like, oh, well, Valve's a different story. But like <laughs> we're looking up to them and we're going, they're like the greatest. And like even Bethesda, and I'm including them because they're a part of this conversation too for kind of the same reasons, but also very different reasons, which is interesting. Okay. It's, it's um, interesting. There's the Zenimax part of it. And then there's just the general Todd Howardness of it. But um you look at what Warner Brothers is trying to do and it's like, I get it. Like these rock steady people, like they're so doing the like, yeah, this is a really great rock steady. It's like they have the sniper on their head. Like I get it. And from what a lot of people have been saying, they said like the stuff that's trying to be rock steady is fine. It's just everything else is a hot mess. And the evolution of like, you know, I brought up Arkham Origins. That was kind of the first part of this. Put multiplayer in your game. Oh, it's a scene. Put multiplayer. Remember when that had like a third person shooter multiplayer game in Batman Arkham Origins? I sure do. That was like shoved in there. I mean, sometimes it's I actually don't... low key awesome. Bioshock 2. We love Bioshock 2. I have, multiplayer. I it was great. It, but the servers are still live on Xbox 360. You can still <laughs> play those. Yeah. Um, but you know you have to have the multiplayer disc for it because it came on a separate disc. Mm-hmm. If you recall, um, yeah, again, that was that period of time where you know companies were throwing in multiplayer games because you know, oh god, Call of Duty is running wild with their mm-hmm. multiplayer, so we got to throw a multiplayer. We love, I mean, and don't get me wrong, we love Bioshock 2's multiplayer. That those servers are still alive. We <laughs> loved the Creed multiplayer. They ain't cut all that shit out. Uh, that's so sad. Um, I'm sure there's others we can think of, but like you could tell when it was not really not that there wasn't any passion behind it, but you can tell when like okay, this is this is trying to go for just a quick buck. Yeah, and I then nowadays now it's the whole we got a whole life service scam that going around here, and the problem ends up becoming. Um, if every game's a live service and is trying to keep your attention for it to be the only game that you play for the rest of your entire life, how are you trying to make that in a market where every game is trying to be that one game that you play for the rest of your entire life? I know. I'm so mad. You keep saying shit where I'm like, that's the perfect transition, but I'm like, I want to get, I want to like, like milk all of this part of the conversation first. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, listen, I got good points. Like, well, and it's also funny because then it's like worse when you backtrack and the game, like our favorite game that we played on this channel, Redfall. I'm not going to get into the Zenimax stuff because again, I want that to be its own little conversation. It's similar to this where it's, hey, do this for us, right? But like Gotham Knights is the same way. Oh shit. Oh, 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 oh. But it kind of make it be like it. It's like you can only do so much because then you play a Redfall or a Gotham Knights and you are playing it going, this was a live service game. It there's no if, ands, or buts. This was a live service game, and you got nervous and you're like, fuck, backtrack, backtrack, cut this, cut this. And like, I guess it's kind of a good thing that like they're making rock steady just go no like we're just gonna go all in on it so at least you know going in like it's like i mean at least you kind of sold your soul all the way you know, like hey, at least at least we don't have to worry about like cross play being a problem they i mean they did say that out of the gate cross play is gonna be good um so hey you know if you're wanting to play with your friends you can play it on any of those systems but i mean we'll see how fucking shit goes and i mean again they keep doing this thing where like oh but if when new characters come out they'll be free and it's like that's cool Uh, we're out of that mentality of dlc i guess but in reality you know dlc is never a bad thing if it wasn't planned from the very beginning Mm -hmm. like the case 
of like something like BioWare, which is a company that we could talk about <laughs> as well. Um, but I mean, they had that problem. Mass Effect to day one DLC, Dragon Age and day one DLC. Uh, I mean, it's and companies still have that day one DLC. One of my favorite companies of all time, Atlas. Uh, they're not in this video really to talk about, but they have been releasing day one DLC way too much. And that's a Sega problem as well. Sega has been released. Yeah. There's still bad problems with like that shit, but it's not like the end of the world with that case. It's more so that like, oh, that's a shitty fucking practice to do. Yeah. Whereas these things are destroying their companies that we're talking about, but not destroying, but like, you they're putting them in such a bad light that you're like this i don't i don't know where i'm going with this i'm gonna be honest hold on do you cut a little bit about this well no 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 honestly i don't even have to cut it because here because i want to add to your point which is you say that and i think about it i go fuck you're right because think about it day one dlc what did we do wow you're gonna just take well but the game was still the game right and then like with the multiplayer shit you didn't even have to like it makes you sad. Oh, Mass Effect how much multiplayer. we've got Mass Effect multiplayer. That yeah, Mass Effect was multiplayer was dope. But like all those resources go into it, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But then it's like at least at that period of time when these companies maybe weren't like that, we could at least go. You don't have to play the multiplayer. The game is the game. Now it's the game is the nightmare. Like the entire product is. We are gonna feed you this garbage. And you're going to have to take it. Whereas before it was, oh, Mass Effect 2, oh, there's day one DLC, but the game's still the game. And like the day one DLCs, I feel like can range. Like it's not all, I swear, I thought she was going to log off the call when we were <laughs> shooting. But like sometimes it's not like that. It's just more you roll your eyes because you're like, yeah, I know what you're doing. But then you move on because the game is still the game. Like, it's not so important. Again, when Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, the entire product is you're going to pay 70 bucks so then you can buy cosmetics and do this and do this. Now, obviously, a lot of people are like, you're, you, you, you can't, that's not going to happen. Like, I'm not that person. I want to play it as a rock steady game. I'll probably hate it because the whole game as a whole is not a rock steady game and then move on. Mm -hmm. But there's other people, like you said, that are into that. And it is so bizarre to me that you have all these companies diving into free-to-play games or live service games that you pay for and you, you know. And it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't even do this shit. And I feel exhausted hearing about it. I'm just like, God, like, how how can people make up like their to, mind? I like to think about um, when Respawn was trying to release Apex Legends and EA was trying to make them make it a pay game that wasn't going to be free to play. It was initially going to be, you had to pay for it. And Respawn you convinced them that it would be the smarter idea to make it free to play. And then because the idea of the game is it's just a multiplayer game, um, it's just really quick matches and things like that that the monetary value of buying it once and then buying additional things to it wouldn't be as much ended up being way better of a cycle for them than it probably would have been if they sold it on market which i mean of course they do have like those versions of apex that you can buy in store but they come with the cosmetics and things like that yeah and, they do that um, with fortnite and stuff too they do fortnite as well um but like like, I think Apex Legends would probably go the same route as Titanfall if they would have done that. And I know how much you love Titanfall, Brian. But let's be real. No one gives a shit about Titanfall anymore. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, and you know, on the... They don't even realize... That... Finish. They Finish. don't even realize Apex Legends is uh, tied into Titanfall. It is. And they did it the smart way. Meanwhile, 343 kind of had to earn some trust back because they dropped, hey, like that was the big news. Halo Infinite multiplayer free to play. Oh, wow. Like you, you're taking big steps. Oh, here's like the worst monetary shop in the world and all this shit. It's like, like, and I get it because I guess that's what free to play is, but it's like you have to find and navigate your way in making a smart business venture 
for the players that want to play and know like you can't put everything behind a paywall because that's going to piss people off, you know? Right. Um, speaking the I battle was, pass like, so far. Yeah. And speaking of games that added multiplayer that we didn't know we'd like, um, also part of the thumbnail is the one lone piece of concept art for uh, the Last of Us multiplayer live service game. Um, <laughs> the one piece where it's like the black girl with the sniper and the other guy with her, and that's all that's all we ever saw. And then it got quietly, they put the pillow on top of it and they smothered it. And low key, I never played it, but the last of us multiplayer um factions I heard was awesome. Her was great. I think I played like a couple games of it when I had originally got the remaster, yeah, on PS4. Um, I, I remember it being enjoyable. It's a little goofy. Um, it, not like, the best, but yeah, a little silly. Well, and we don't know if like the decision by Sony was like, "Hey, you know what we're gonna do? You're gonna make the big single player Last of Us, and then we're just gonna take multiplayer off of it, and we're gonna make that its own thing." I don't know. That's cynical me. Like maybe that's a business thing of they just wanted to do that, and then it happened, and then you had you know you brought up Destiny, you have. Bungie, who, you know, whether you like Destiny or not, when you have a company like them go in and see The Last of Us and they go, yeah, this isn't going to work. And then it just kind of became a hot mess and then it got shuttered, which, I mean, for better or for worse, it's upsetting, but... The reason, the reason being we have to focus on the live service game and working on our single player games. And you're like, oh, okay. Or you're saying that it's not working out. We, mm. we, 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 it's, it's, it's just not going to work. And, and I don't I know mean, if that's, that's a part of Sony's, like, they wanted to do all these live service games and then realized, like you said, and they have to do this. Maybe that was part of like half of those games that they cut. May, or who knows? Maybe that was one of the ones they really were like, yeah, this is an IP we own and this is a big IP. Like, let's try to, and then they're like, and then Neil's like, Hold on. Let me do my impression of him. I'm so, like, everyone in Hollywood loves me now. Like, I'm so, I'm like a genius. Like, I'm at the Golden Globes. I'm at the Emmys. My show's doing great. Um, I got the girl from Booksmart as Abby, everyone's favorite. You know, I'm just, everyone loves me. I'm Neil Druckmann. Nobody thinks I'm a pretentious douchebag. Uh, so, but so we got that, where it's like, it's like all oh, that money and and see then that's when I feel that's when I feel the most for these people. I'm like God, like especially with Naughty Dog because Naughty Dog they hit some strides and then they became one of those outliers of oh you're making those people work so much yeah. this game falling apart. It's like all that money and time. It's like it, it's oh. very fascinating because you know well, Naughty Dog doesn't put out a game like every year. They, they were close when they were doing the Uncharted games. They were doing it like yeah. every two years and then spinoffs and shit like that. And you're like, God damn, this company's working hard. And then, you know, Last of Us dropped and then Uncharted 4 came out, what, like three years later? Yeah. Like it was like 2016. And then they did Lost Legacy, which was like 2018. That was just a spinoff reusing assets and things like that. And then Last of Us 2 came out in 2020. So they take their time. And we know they do. But then at the same time, you're just like, what is going on behind the scenes that are they just pushing all their production to be done in one year's time? Do they just they're just taking their sweet ass time to figure out what the fuck the plot is going to be to realize that they messed the plot up in general? I mean, let's be real, because not saying Uncharted 4 was a bad game, but that plot. It was way too long. It was way too long. And now the only thing they've worked on recently is the remaster for The Last of Us Part Two. at the time of this video is just out. It's just released. Mm -hmm. And it's not bad. The game ran already perfectly fine on the PS5, mainly because it was at the tail end of the PS4. It already chugged that system along. Now you have just a little bit better performance, which is awesome. And they have like a roguelike mode now. And and they're not charging an arm and a leg for it to play the game that came out in 2020 for $70 again. No, they're only charging 10 bucks if you already own the game. And I believe it's 
believe it's 50 maybe 60 dollars if you're just buying it for the first time on ps5 which just buy a copy on ps4 for cheap you can get one or i got my copy and i still haven't played it because i've been waiting for the remaster for 10 bucks during a black friday sale here we are unless they pull which it'd be funny if they did they pulled the ps4 version <laughs> and you know what which, that was I'm, even, I'm gonna wait to talk about Zenimax because I'm taking the advantage now. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about a studio. Let's talk about two particular studios. One that is known for a crunch, but has learned not to be crunch, but has done that shit. And another company that I think had to realize, yeah, nobody likes us anymore. We really need to save our graces. Let's talk about the bad one. Uh, another goat in the gaming industry, Rockstar. Boy, I'm hoarding. Five, Ryan. What are you talking about? GTA Six, 2025. They're taking their sweet time with it. It'll be fine. Well, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about when um, a few years ago they put out, uh, they took, you know, how they had like the Android and like phone versions of Three, Vice City, and San Andreas. They said, what the yeah, those were all okay. those, those were nice ports. You know, they. They wouldn't do anything with those. Just leave them on the phone. Leave them alone. But, leave them alone. But what Eric, are you doing? You can't, Eric, you can't play the originals though anymore. What are you talking about? I got it on, I got, they're on Steam still, right? Oh, what? I have to open up the Rockstar launcher? And, and, yeah, it's the, it's the new versions, the new versions with the great rain effects. That gives you like a headache. Bioware wasn't stupid oh. though. They fucking put out Mass Effect and Andromeda, then Anthem, and then said, Oh God, what do we do now? And so then they put out their Mass Effect trilogy, which was like, honestly, for the longest fucking time, one of the longest things that we were hearing about like every month. Oh, is it coming out? Oh, is it coming out? Oh, is it coming? Like it was forever, and then it did, and then you know what they said? I'm not gonna delete the originals, and everyone said, oh, "Like, woo okay, Bioware." And then obviously, Dragon Age and um Mass Effect, the new one, those will probably come out around the same time as Elder Scrolls Nine. Who knows when that's gonna be? Who knows oh, when any worry, of those Brian. games are gonna come out? For, we got a trailer for a trailer. The the trailer comes out in fucking six months. Mm -hmm. like, brilliant idea, Bioware. I will say, GTA with well, GTA Rockstar definitely is in that. Show us what GTA Six is because I know a lot of people. Red Dead Redemption Two was kind of that weird split of people don't think it's terrible or anything, but it's one of those they like don't even know it's a video game, like. They just feel like it keeps the cutscenes just keep playing. And then two hours later, like, oh, I can move. Yeah. Just to go with cutscene. So we're gonna see if GTA six, like I think a lot of Rockstar's problems are more so just kind of that internal crunch. So maybe GTA six. I mean, we want the trailer, I was kind of like, look, GTA is not my thing like everyone else, but holy shit, like this kind of looks crazy. <laughs> it's interesting to think, like when when gta 5 came out god almost 11 years ago that that kind of became like the front runner for a live service game because the game the online mode kind of never stopped i know still we could have gotten so many things but all they wanted to do is gta online and there's another there's a good example of when it's like wow so the we could have gotten last generation ps4 xbox one no new Grand Theft Auto games, which is crazy to think about because it's like, you know, from the PS2, we had Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, San Andreas, you know, the, the, the tiers, as they like to call them, the kings, the goats. And then they go to Xbox 360, PS3, we get Grand Theft Auto 4, the DLCs for Grand Theft Auto. They put out Red Dead Redemption, which big game and they also put out you know gta 5 you know at the tail end of the console generation but still they put it out there on three discs on xbox 
surprised your Xbox didn't fucking explode. No. Well, uh, like, they were also putting, like, we had Bully. We had Table fucking Tennis. We had, like, Midnight Club. We had L.A. Noir, Max Payne 3. Rockstar yeah, was, like, out. actually putting out games other than Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the PS4, Xbox One was just, here's Grand Theft Auto 5 and all the updates for it. Also, here's Red Dead Redemption 2, and it it runs, and it just plays a movie. And I'm not saying I'm worried about GTA 6. I think it's going to be great. But also, there's a bit of me that's like, well, let's take a step back. Let's actually wait till uh, more gameplay comes out. Because I'm sure, again, I'm sure the gameplay will be fine. But all we got was that two minutes. And it was a good two minutes. It's silly. I can't wait to go back to freaking uh, Vice City. I can't wait to explore Florida. I'm, it's where I live. I'm ready for see some stupid shit. <laughs> I'm hoping that there's an Orlando area. I don't know what they'll call it, but I hope there's just a bunch of crappy theme parks. It'll be hilarious. Um but you know what else has rockstar got going on fixing their previous mistakes with those games Mm -hmm. who knows when that will be done and when we still have the max Payne remakes but that's really under remedy yeah that's kind of like uh we're gonna we're gonna okay you guys wanting to do it and help but yeah that's kind of their thing yeah, but even remedies like we also want to do our own shit. We want to focus on control too. We got uh, Alan Wake DLC, so that's not saying that remedy. I mean, remedy will do a lot of things. They did the fucking single player for Crossfire X for God's sakes, a game you can't even play anymore. Um, but you know, when remedy has their passion on something, you know, they want to focus on it. That was the case with Alan Wake. That's why that game took forever to come out. That was a, with, well, with Quantum Break, for better or worse. <laughs> that was the case with Control and Alan Wake 2, especially. Um, but Rockstar doesn't have that same mindset, I feel like. They're kind of just like, what can we do with what we have to make Which more money? So I'll sick. And that's the thing. That's what's so sad. Because, dude, they probably have billions upon trillions of dollars at this point. Like, watching that trailer, I'm like, this game must be, like, $750, $900 million to to make. Like, this is probably going to be the most expensive video game. And they can get away with it because they just got money on top of money on top of money. And it's, like, so sad. We could have gotten Bully 2. They could have done another Midnight Club. They could have, like, I know they were trying to do that Agent game, which was, like, a PS3 kind of dark noir game. I just want to see Rockstar do other stuff again besides Mm -hmm. just this. They can close another video. (laughs) Team Bonding. Well, like, talking about um, Rockstar having to kind of earn it, I think Bioware's in that position where I, like, this Dragon Age game is going to kind of, I mean, I know Inquisition was before all of the kind of downfall of them, and I know people really like that. So I guess that's going to be something interesting. I not perfect at that time either. We knew that Dragon Age 2 was a rush job. Oh, that is, I guess that is a good point. So it's like, I mean, yeah, because that was that point in time that they were trying to, the problem with going back to like talking about like Naughty Dog taking their sweet time, they don't do yearly releases. They were trying to make Bioware a yearly, a yearly release company. It was 2010 was Mass Effect 2, 2011 was Dragon Age 2, and then 2012 was Mass Effect 3. 2013 they took a year off but did they really there was a lot of dlc for mass effect 3 going out during that time and they had to fix a lot of shit because people weren't happy and even though ea kind of sucks 
like they sucked a lot back then. And I'm not saying they're perfect now, but EA, I think is definitely, if you look at a lot of those companies, those kind of second tier companies, they are definitely a lot better now. Like, again, they're better off than like Poopy Soft, for sure. Like they're definitely in a position where they're, they're still, because they're still getting away with doing some of the shit they do. But it's fine because they're like, okay, cool. We're making money. But sure, Joseph, make what other weird co-op game that you want to make. Like, that's like kind of where they're at now, where they're cool with that. Because yeah. like you said, the fact that Respawn, but that's also a Vince Zampella thing. Because he's like one of the goats in the industry. For him to be like, listen, you probably want to make money, right? Don't, like you said, don't, why would you want to? charge this and it's like like those are these companies being like listen we get it you're evil you want to make money do you want to make more money listen to us and then if you listen like with apex legends and ended up working out you had some thoughts on bungie and destiny i want to talk about that now because bungie right my well i mean fucking <laughs> christ's sake i love bungie but then obviously once they were off of microsoft now in sony ironically like destiny was a thing that was with activision they got the rights they owned it blah 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 and then it's been kind of up and down with them with destiny since yeah i mean that was a staple of here's this live service game that we're charging full price for and then eventually you know i think once you know of course they left activision and kept the rights and things like that that you know they made a decision okay it's free to play which was a smart idea they brought more player bases in more revenue could easily come in because you had the benefit of the idea it's a free game here you go support developers and things like that but they were working on destiny for way too long i don't understand that i i know so many people that just hate how destiny 2 plays how it feels how it does feel like it's trying to just grab your money especially when they release these huge dlc packs that are like 20 bucks each mm -hmm. insane and they only last like seven hours I, I again that's a different home whole moral ground of how much is something really worth you yeah. know i spent this much time is it really not worth this much money i get that mindset it's DLC at the end of the day, though, and you keep releasing DLCs like that. That's a different story. Yeah. That's where it's like a little bit of a con con constriction and kind of grimy. And now it's to the point that, you know, it's to the point that even though now that they've made so much money out of it, they're just firing half their staff anyway. <laughs> And we know who to blame for it. It's Brian's fault. He broke into Bungie and he said, everyone get out. That'll be a story for another day. We'll, we'll, we're going to keep you in suspense with that story. It's not exciting. It's just funny. <laughs> it's a funny story, yeah. With Zenimax, it falls in line of, you know, you kind of just want to nod your head and go, okay, yeah, we're going to do this. And then they leave and you're like, I'm going to lose my job if I don't do this or I need to find another job. So ZeniMax, let's talk about the fun that ZeniMax had from like what? 2018 to just last year with Redfall, where yeah, every company that was owned by them, they said, well, maybe besides Tango, they said, hey, we want to make money and we want to have live service and we want to have whatever. Machine games, we want you to make a terrible runoff game of Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein Youngblood, where it's always online, even if it's co-op or not. And we just in like maybe the two annoying daughters are a machine games decision. Maybe that's not <laughs> a Zenimax thing, but just this co-op thing that is so like open world and what? And then obviously. The Fallout 76 thing, in hindsight, I don't get as mad at Todd Howard. I do get it mad at Todd Howard for what I want to talk about to end my Zenimax conversation. We'll get to that. But like in, in the moment, it was like, wow, Todd, you son of a bitch. But then I think in realizing like what was going on with that company, you look at all that was happening. It's like, 
okay, like, I mean, I could see the fact that they were, you know, because it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go, no? I mean, I feel like Todd should have the power and authority to have been like, we're not doing this. Like, no, <laughs> screw off. Like, you know, and then where's we that? The, the fallout to not have it be a weird multiplayer game. Yeah. And like, we hey, are. Like, that's it's so... The, it is the fact that they did charge for it that again going back to the point of these live service games being charged for 60 70 dollars yeah and you are just like yep this feels like it's supposed to keep asking for more money yeah and then like we obviously we talked about redfall kind of just ruined you know arcane and all that stuff um, even though that was a different arcane studio, that wasn't the studio that's now doing it, a blade it game. Damper it. But I mean, also, like, I'm not saying Deathloop. It's also putting their pedestal on Deathloop because they're like, oh, this is it. Meanwhile, Deathloop is probably the most, I don't know, I haven't played it still. So I'll probably play to it at some point. It's probably it's the most non arcane like, arcane game. It's most solid, like six, seven out of 10. Yeah. The plot doesn't matter. The game kind of plays itself. Um, you know the idea of the hunter coming after you to get you down uh eh. and yet people are like we're nominating this for game of the year i guess <laughs> yeah and i think that game just had a wide audience because i know prey was a game that people kind of like looked down on and I, in hindsight people are like prey is really good i thought prey was cool like i was into it and I, 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 not our I played a bit of it i played a bit of it i wasn't really that big of a fan of it but that's just me. Um, but hey, I, I, I'm i also a person that doesn't like other games. Outer Wilds, baby. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I just, I hate the controls. But hey, people think it's the greatest game of all time. Good for them. Like, well, cool. But so then, so I brought up the Todd Howard thing. And the one thing about Todd Howard that I will not. So obviously there's one connective tissue through a lot of this, which is big evil corporations are billionaire saying we want more money and like you know like you said day one dlc turned to shoved in multiplayer forced multiplayer turned to live service and you know i you really the main thing with a lot of these companies is crunch i mean valve just realized at a certain point they couldn't come out with a great game anymore because they couldn't you know they didn't want to get nervous even though they still did but I, my whole thing with Valve was they're not going to put out a new game until VR is a thing because that's how they are. They're very much like we, they're like that George Lucas mentality of we're going to wait for the next thing to put said thing on it, um, which was like an anomaly. But like Bethesda, Bethesda, Zenimax aside, sits in that camp of how the mighty fall. We, you know, we won't talk about which games, but we talked about, oh, amount of bethesda games on our gaudy cast for example and like how much you know we love them and stuff and really after skyrim which is a whole nother conversation of that game has come out seven eight times now at this point dollars um, still for it mm -hmm. there's this equation of like them just sounding like they're lazy and I've only played, well, I shouldn't say only. I've played like 10, 11 hours of Starfield. And I'm definitely in that camp of people where like, it's kind of that everyone's now crapping on it. Everyone, And then there's those people like, oh, I'm in the middle. I'm still in that camp of, I'm definitely going into it with a more, I'm liking it and enjoying it a lot more than some people. I think a lot of the aspects are really interesting. Some of the low parts of the game, I'm like, whatever, it's fine. But I'm hoping now that Bethesda being owned by Microsoft, the game that they fucking promised they were going to put out, but it clearly wasn't going to come out forever, Elder Scrolls 6. I just hope, and I don't think it's going to happen. I just want them to say, since Microsoft owns them now, they have all the time in the world. Starfield is the last game for creation. Kill the engine. It's done. Kill the engine. <laughs> kill it like literally turn it off turn it off it's like how delete the code yeah. put it in a fire um and then have that fire get sucked into a black hole exactly make creation two 
you now have all this money, all these resources, all this time. Work on Starfield DLC. That's fine. Make creation too. Because guess what? You are at a point now where your engine is so outdated and you're selling people on like the same thing. I'm definitely one of those people where I can, you know, there's the jokes of like certain things people say, well, it's a Bethesda game, but a Bethesda game is not like a game that's just buggy and kind of to the point where like people like if you say that, like for someone trying to defend Starfield, Mm -hmm. they're like, that's not a defense anymore. Like it really should have been a defense. Like we, I mean, Fallout 4 wasn't perfect obviously um but it was felt like it was so they were trying ideas and the ideas that they were trying just didn't work and i felt that they knew what those ideas were but then the problems that are around the game where it was like oh how do we fix like plot problems or how do we fix gameplay elements and things like that none of that was left over where people were like Oh, we don't like that the protagonist talks. Okay, your protagonist in Starfield doesn't talk anymore. There you go. Problem solved. I just... The fact that this... Like, imagine... It's like the idea of when, like, you have bad glasses or, like, you can't hear, which, obviously, we already know. That's my problem. Um, Or, like... And then you have that moment where it's like you go in and they clear it out and you're like, your hearing is like, oh my God, is this how the world sounds? That's the same thing. Imagine Creation 2. Imagine Elder Scrolls 6 comes out and it feels like this game is like 40 years ahead of what they've been doing. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck is this? This is so cool. And that's, and it's like upsetting because I don't think it's going to happen. Because like I listened to Todd talk about how it's easy to just do this and like sure from a from a personal perspective of work ethics and stuff i get it like i understand we're humans we want smarter not harder right but you're at the point where you literally have all the money and resources in the world where it's like you can literally just start making your new engine or use a new engine like i know like, like, I'm pretty sure Coalition, like, they have their own game engine that works within, like, other Microsoft games or something like that. I don't know if it's them or something, but there has to be some engines. Because, like, Halo's not going to be on this Slip Space engine anymore. They're going to Unreal for the next one. Like, right. you have to move forward. And my whole thing is, imagine moving forward now, and then you can use that for a while until you have to move on again like we have to move on we that have to problem. move on that, that was the problem with uh ea they were trying to force their companies all to use the frostbite engine like, mm-hmm. and, well bioware fell victim to that because their games aren't meant to be using that engine that engine is meant for something like battlefield where like the it's more about like destruction layers and like the shooting and things like that Whereas something like Mass Effect and Drama is exploring a planet's grounds, and well, the planet's grounds just start disappearing because the engine doesn't know what to do. Yeah. So luck, they made the smart option when they did the re-release of the trilogy. They pushed it into the new uh, uh, well, at the time Unreal Engine four, and they said, "Here you go, up-res graphics with Unreal Engine, and game looks great. Looks great still if you play it on uh, next-gen consoles." Um, so I think also I think they also and I'm not saying this was a stipulation when it was coming coming out um, but they really do need to start pushing for consoles to have 60 FPS on launch because uh, that was another thing with Starfield uh, listen your game's running on your shitty ass engine that you've been using this whole time you're telling me you can't make that at least 60 frames a second for console like i i I'm, i understand like redfall being like oh we can't do 60 fps you know and things like that i can understand it uh, but i've thought about it i'm like no no this is stupid if you're using the same engine bethesda specifically if you've been using the same engine that you're running fucking fallout 3 on you could put 60 fps into it 
So whatever they decide to do, because if Elder Scrolls Six comes out and they announce that the console version is not getting sixty FPS out of the gate, people are gonna are done. They're literally gonna be like, we're <laughs> We're going to figure out a way to mod our console to fucking put 60 FPS in it because you won't do it. Literally. They don't know how, like, everything that they do, it's like a modder fixes in, like, a day. Like, especially menus. Bethesda does not know how to do menus at all, which is fine. Like, I'm one of those people where, like, sure, you don't always need to be the best at, like, certain things and whatever, whatever have you, but, like, it, it gets to a point where, like, when there are people putting out, I was watching Nakey Jakey's video about Bethesda, and it was really funny because I'm, like, sitting here going, man, he's so right. Because, like, everyone talks about, like, the fact that you have to load to go to a planet. You have to load to land on the planet. You have to then watch this to do this. And, like, here's my thing. I'm one of those weird people where, like, I get it's annoying, and I do get bothered by it, but I'm kind of... And again, I think I'm probably part of the problem. My expectations going into it, I go, okay, well, yeah, because this is this kind of engine and it's them. So like, am I supposed to expect anything else? And I don't like that because that's complacency. You should expect more because like we talked about, it's not like like those older games are Bethesda games and there's goofy stuff about them. But like, I still feel like there's greatness to them that I think gets lost sometimes because nobody talks about them like that anymore because it's like a joke. Like you listen, to, like you play Fallout 4 and you're like, look at all these bugs. <laughs> it's so funny. It's a Bethesda game. Like that's what they're known for now. And then like all this shit they've been doing about like, oh, why do you guys hate Starfield? It's just because you're not playing it right. No, don't, no, don't do that because you're about to piss everybody off. Just shut up they don't like your game move on like it's the way that it is don't be these assholes doing the whole overrating your game secret tweeting which warner brothers did but we're not talking about that uh, well we did talk about them with rocksteady but like that shit it's like don't do that because that is what's gonna piss people off bethesda back in the day it was like bethesda rocksteady naughty dog valve rockstar and now to be fair, most of them are just in shitty situations and it's like, God, I feel so bad for them. And, but you know, you should, you know, this is something you can control. You telling people, yeah, uh, st but st you're just not playing Starfield right. And then fucking Sean Murray's over here like, ha ha, come play my game that I've made. And then I had to make better over the course of like 10 years. <laughs> like... But it's okay. I'm making a new one. And, I and everyone's like, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the, the Rocksteady thing's upsetting more because you could tell it's like you could tell behind those faces. They're like, oh, my God, why am I making well? Is too with the Rocksteady thing. It comes to the situation of oh, we're worried about that because this could close the studio. Exactly. And that's depressing. Where the rest of these were like, they're not going to close. Naughty Dog's not going to shut down. There's no fucking way. Rockstar, that would be, GTA 6 would have to make negative money for that to happen. They literally going to need to sell one copy and they'll be fine, probably. Uh, Bungie, they'll figure something out. Whatever. And then we'll see how Marathon goes, and we'll see what that's all about. Bioware, you know, they're on their probably second to last chance. Everyone thought they were going to be dead after Anthem, and they, everyone was kind of shocked that they survived for as long as they did. But the problem is, you know, we've given them time. That's why. Now they're kind of on their last chance. They're kind of in that same base with, like, Rocksteady, where it's like, okay, if this is the next fuck up, now their studio's probably going to get close. And, I, I mean, I have I have more faith than I in Bioware than I do in Rocksteady is the problem. Well, and like you think about it, the thing that makes me more sad about Rocksteady is again, they're owned by Warner Brothers. Imagine, like, remember when James Gunn is out here, like, oh, we're going to have video games of this and that. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> like that. I mean, I think they're going to realize, like, I think he's going to learn that's not how video games work. 
Like that's not how that sort of situation works. But like, I mean, he's worked in the video game space, but not to the extent that I think he knows it. Yeah. But it's, it is sad though, because everyone will have a fall. Like, you know, it's not like, I mean, maybe a lot of times it's like independent developers where you're like, those are kind of the people you're championing and whatnot, but. I mean, naming things off in previous past, Sega had that big fall with the Dreamcast to eventually when they became, you know, just the video game publisher. Look at them now. They're doing pretty all right. They still have D1 DLC problems, but no one is hounding over for Sega because of it. They just don't like it because it is money grubby a little bit but sega's not in a problem of worry about being closed down um you look at companies like square enix square enix does a bunch of fucking shit they also do a lot of great things with the industry and let their creators do whatever they want final fantasy 16 is a great example of it where they just said here you go just make the game you want to make or we'll let you use the fucking big title of final fantasy and and mix opinions on what people really thought of Final Fantasy, but overall, a lot of people liked it. And you know, they are letting Final and then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and things like that. They're giving the people what they want. They want more of this stuff. Kingdom Hearts is getting all the attention that he needs to get over time. But Square has also had their own problems of like you know with say like the avengers that was a big thing for square and then they realized they weren't making any fucking money out of it and then they ended up selling the studios things like that yeah um, i mean also you think about it this way just because the mighty fall is like this product thing doesn't mean it can't include other people like nintendo they put out oh bangers so you- if you put anything on youtube like they're hate they hate youtubers they will copyright strike. Yes, because if they if there's that one person listening right now, they'll strike your video down. And it's like, that doesn't look good. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's, even if you're praising whatever you're playing, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't have that up there. No. Eventually, got a little bit better about it, but it only took them to like the 20th century to figure that out. Yeah, everyone else in the like, 1600s figured that out a long time ago that it was okay to upload. Um, and I mean, and, and again, they've made they've made some stupid decisions too. I mean, the Wii U, of course, was a weird thing in general. And well, they I were mean, they were swinging big. We knew, like, I think now you look back and you go, okay, clearly they were trying to do this earlier than we thought. It's just it they needed to fall for them to go, okay. How do we do that but better? And then we got the Switch, so. (laughs) And now the problem is the Switch is just, you're not getting the high quality games that you should be getting with using a piece of technology that's running games that really came out in 2014. Well, this year, possibly, that's the rumor, is that this year. I mean, it's, it's needed for sure. You can't just fucking switch with an OLED screen and say it's better everything will be fine I mean I don't know Tears of the Kingdom I was playing that and thinking to myself fucking Christ there are oh. there are some amazing things that you can do with <laughs> with the technology it's given Tears of the Kingdom is a brilliant example of that um, Mario Wonders a great example of that um, Pokemon Legends Arceus is a great example of that but then you have cases of the other Pokemon games that are a terrible example of that. Or the third-party games that come over, like going back to Remedy, Alan Wake Remastered is a piece of garbage on the Switch. Uh, oh, I've seen the Batman, the Batman trilogy clips. Speaking of Rock City, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, only way you can currently play with the Robert Pattinson skin is a terrible way to play the game. It's... It's it's due time to finally say, okay, okay, it's time to move on. Mm-hmm. Because imagine now with Tears of the Kingdom with like a better processing system for what current tablets have. It would be amazing. Again, we're hoping at the end of the day, we're not saying, you know, that all the things that we talked about are going to happen. 
it's not fun. Like that's the main thing we want to put out there. It's it's interesting to talk about. We don't have fun having to be all pissed off and negative about this because it's like these studios when we were younger it was like every e3 was like are we gonna see rockstar secretly show because they never came they never came to e3 and we're like rockstar are they gonna show up oh are we gonna see the new batman arc like this is how our childhood was it just felt like you would have these, I mean, and again, like there's not that many auteurs in video games either. It's a lot of companies. Like we already know with like Ken Levine, what happened there. And like, we're hoping, you know, when Judas comes out, like, you know, it just kind of looks like Bioshock again, but I'm cool with it. Cause I love Ken Levine yeah. and let's hope it's really good. So here we get some news about Judas, but you know, take your time. No, Ken's not going to push for it. Cause I mean, we know what happened with Irrational and infinite and, then there's your downfall exactly and you know it's just again it's not fun i find it interesting because again for the most part it's a lot of just money hungry people and it's sad because these people work so hard and so long and so much yeah i never want to speculate so long i never yeah i never want to speculate the downfall i won't ever want to speculate um well i shouldn't say the downfall i won't i don't want to speculate the bad outcomes i don't yeah. want to speculate people losing jobs i don't want to no. speculate like a whole studio closing no because there's so much work there's so much ideas and so much uh going on that i would not ex i would never wish for someone to lose what they have absolutely um especially after last year with god how how many people was it it was like sixty thousand people in the game and, and we lost start the new year i was gonna say dead by daylight studio i just read today they laid off people it's like god <laughs> yeah they it, said got that alan wake dlc we gotta you gotta go what would be that studio now like what studios would you put in that light because i'll be honest i have only one probably from soft it's the only studio that I could put in that light with all those. Because again, growing up, you uh, had that graphic of all those studios. FromSoft is probably there's probably more, but FromSoft I think is probably number one, right? Uh, for for me, maybe Santa Monica. I would say okay, Santa uh, Monica is a good choice. I would probably say Santa Monica at this time. I'm not saying that they're not doing any wrong. I don't know what goes behind the scenes we yeah. don't know what goes behind the scenes we don't know if Corey yes, barlog is like telling christopher judge to beat people in the studio and again like i would love to say atlas but again they have sega under them where they want to throw their practices on them that's not great i mean that um, whole Valhalla thing i'm like that Valhalla, modern Valhalla sony thing. does not do shit like that like Corey I mean, must I, have pushed I, for that again i never hear anything bad coming out of remedy i just know that they don't like have the best quality products from time to time when they do something like crossfire x so may remedy could be up there because again sam likes passionate about his company he loves everything he does for his company but well and the problem you know, with remedy, we've talked about this like honestly i think i may consider remedy amongst that the problem with them is they're not a studio that gets appreciated like that so yeah crossfire x is God, okay, we need more money for Alan Wake 2. We'll get how much to do this shitty game? Okay, mm -hmm. bet. Like, I I would fucking do it if I was them. I have, I'd have i have no shame if it was for money for, Alan, like, again, for a passion project. And then, you know, we've talked about Remedy in, like, uh, the remasters video, the remasters remakes video, where I'm like, all of a sudden, Control, which is probably, like, their most successful, kind of accessible game, fucking blows up it's probably, now they're doing all this shit and it's like whoa this was not remedy like back in the day this was not remedy they were not doing this kind of shit so it's crazy to see them so successful now in certain right. way put alan wake 2 on a fucking disc that's that's probably the one thing that you're like listen here remedy. that's all i hate sam lake for but uh no like I don't know. Like, it is weird looking at all the studios now and think, like I said, like, FromSoft, I think, is up there. 
Remedy I would put up there because I think they definitely have made it. It's just, you think about it, like, right. you no, know what other studio, like, obviously Nintendo is always there, but like, but there's problems about it. Like, at Capcom's like up there at the moment, but like, Capcom's also done some really shady shit in the past that people can't forgive. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's like, uh, it's so hard to think about. I mean, I'm just looking through right now my my PlayStation library, and I'm like, yeah, I can't go with them. I can't go with them. Why is this? Why is that? Oh, because of who they're owned by and what they practice is by. <laughs> oh, because the studio shut down because they yeah. just never had any money at Telltale right now. Um, yeah, it's a lot of yeah, yeah. It's a lot of just studios. I'm like, I, there's Konami right there. We don't even need to get into Konami. <laughs> well, we don't talk about Konami. No. <laughs> well, like, think about this. Activision Blizzard, they have shitty practices, but Bobby's gone. Phil Spencer shot him on a rocket out of the planet. So it's like, let's... <laughs> yeah, so let's let's hope that, you know... You know, I know a lot of people have problems with like Diablo 4 and stuff. I mean, we don't. I mean, maybe for other reasons, but like, you know, Diablo Immortal and like all those practices. And who knows, maybe at Microsoft owning them now, we'll see where the tides turn. But I don't know. I mean, people would say CG Project Red a long time ago. And then 2077 came out. And I mean, now it's got the higher grace. So you're like, that's great. But people still can't get over two years ago when that game launched like people still can't forgive them for that yeah. so it's like okay so yes that yes they have high praise now and people love what they were phantom liberty but that launch so bad yeah it's just like oh what are we doing here i don't know i feel like now let's just all buy indie games uh because those will be the studios <laughs> you know those are all the other studios that'll be fine Nothing will happen with them. No, uh, I don't know. Hey, I, we've been we've been going on for a lot longer than we've been expecting. So, a great conversation, nonetheless. Great conversation. Yeah, throw it down to you guys in the comments. Do you have a studio that you have strong feelings of going on the downward, as we like to say, mm -hmm. the downfall, the downward that you're either like worried about? an example that we may not have brought in that you would like to talk about um, there's plenty of again we've talked about it not ev clearly not every studio is perfect at this rate no but we do hold studios to higher regards because of what they've done in the past and i mean we still hold them to currently what they're doing right now we're just nothing's going to change we want the best from our studios um so please tell us in the comments if you got examples, if you want to discuss something we've already talked about. We'd love to hear it. We, this, is a, this is a conversation that we're really passionate about, as you can tell. Um, even though we've been all over the place with where our studio's decisions, and you can see like some areas are different from other studios than others. Yeah. Um, but we'd be glad to hear what you guys have to think down there. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, I was very video. proud of myself this video because I felt like I was about to take it all over the place and I felt like I ended each part before I went on to the next. <laughs> right. You just kept right. up good points and then I was like, I want to talk about Bioware now. Shit, no, I'll wait. I want to talk about Bethesda. No, shit, no. I want to talk about no. So I was just like, get this point done, move on. But yeah, all the things Eric said, Eric just fucking nailed that outro. I have nothing else to say. So um, toodaloo. Oh, okay. I guess that's it. <laughs> Bye, guys. Blue.